Hi there, this is just a super quick um, tutorial on how what I use my Google Classroom for. If you are familiar with Edmodo, then you're probably familiar with this as well. It's basically the same idea, and you can use it for any way you choose. I use it as a launch base for my kids. Anything I have to do, go to Google, Google Classroom, go to Google Classroom, If I, whether it's to view a link or anything else along those lines. In Google Classroom, you have three sections. The stream, where all the posts are. Students, where it lists your students. You'll also find your student code here. So when the kids are signing up initially, there's a little more effort in it, yeah. But after that, they can save this to their favorites and they can click on it. They also can go into um, their waffle here and they will have an app right here that says Classroom. They can add that simply by going to the web store if it's not there. It possibly already is, but if not, go to web store and look up Google Classroom. And then that way they'll have that there available on their waffle at all times. Now, the third section is about, and you can put some different things in there, but it's usually about your classroom. In my case, I share um, my classroom with the gifted resource teacher, so she can drop anything she wants in there. There's also a calendar section. Now, tapping back to students real quick. This is for more like phase two, but when you're ready for it, you can go to students, and let's say you wanted to email a certain student something. You can click on the several students you want and then you can click email student and it'll send an email actually to their Gmail that the school system has set up for them. Now in the stream, the stream is just like Edmodo, you post what you want. What I've used it for is I wanted the kids to add this app. I can add multiple things here. This is a picture of what the app will look like in the app store. It's called Story Wars Classroom and it's a really cool app if you haven't seen it. It's also, you can go to storywars.net and it has story starters for them, but people have actually started the story and they can pick up wherever the story is at that particular time. Um, and then this is a direct link that'll take them to the app that they can click on. Another thing that I have a lot of are my, you know, assignments for when I want them to do for centers during language arts, you know, go to readtheory.org, do the SOL Achieve 3000 test, what's behind this door, um, these are the names of the, the test, but you can put in this. I also put quizzes as a resource. Quizzes is a great program to use when you're digital because they can follow this list and then they go to this quizzes and they take this assessment. And it's like a practice as well as just an assessment. Um, you can put links in there for um, specific websites you want to use. You can also go ahead and create something like where the, they have a document. And I'll show you this specifically because this is great with splitting the document out. So I have a document, and when I create something, I almost always create it with an assignment because with assignments, I have extra choices. So I'm going to put ecosystem. This is just going to be a test. And then I can put directions here, directions. And then I can put a due date if I want. So it'll show up in their um, work as needing it to be due. Now the topic session or section, you can create a new topic which is fantastic because if you put topics in here you have a whole library um, book. it's like a set of library books on the left side of your screen and I'll show you that in a moment so you can call this whichever you want um, we'll call it ecosystem I actually have a folder in here for ecosystem so just click on that and it'll be in your folder for ecosystems so you can add documents here now what I love this is when I go to Google Drive and I've created a Google Doc or a Google Slide, I can pull in anything that I've, you know, here's recent, but I can also look for my drive. But if I wanted to pull in this vocabulary tree practice document for them, all I need to do is click on it, add it. Now before I do anything else, you have this drop down menu here. This one here, you can say, students can view the file. Students can edit the file, and if they can edit the file, it means that everybody is going to be able to edit it at the same time. So if you're doing something where you have a document that you want them to all input an answer on, there could be a question in the middle. And around it, there could be other boxes. You can have the boxes numbered alphabetically. And if your kids have magic numbers where they have the number of um, their number one, number two, number three, you can number your boxes, and then they can go ahead and submit an answer when they open it up into that box number. So that would be an edit file. One of my awesome favorites is, is if I want the kid to have their own copy, I make one master copy and boom, make a copy for each student. Now when the child opens it up, here's the great part. Let me show you without saving that and sending it. The kids have been working on 
the ecosystem that I've had sent out. Now you can see that none of them have finished it. So I can click over here on the 26. Now I can see all the kids. Now if they finished it, I can also see them. This is really awesome because I can add grades to it and I can message them here. Um, if I wanted to on this one, I could open up their ecosystem project and let me see by clicking on it, get a good one here, click there, it opens it up and it opens up the actual document that I have sent to them and it's going to show me the work that they are working on and what they have done so I can see what they've completed. Now I can leave a comment for them when this is fully loaded, I can leave comments for them down here under the notes section. I can also you know, highlight something like this and I can click on the word comment and I can comment something and if I write a comment there they can see what I have said about their work real time especially if they're in it already. Now on this students I can click through and see what they put together for their um, showing me their answers. This student was you know how do you know which fish could get in between the cracks of rocks and corals and prove it to me. So they have examples of adaptations for other fish. They have um, you know it says that this kind of a fish with this kind of a nose can get into the cracks and crevices and they have got a, a video here to prove their answer is correct um, for their selection. And then as you can see, they're kind of going down and repeating the process for the other slides in it. Now this is Google Slides, so I put in the main slide and when I sent it to them, it just looked like this, kind of questions that they had from our practice test. And then they have to go back and prove their answers or you know, and circle their answers. So I can pop in there and I can make my comments. And you know, after I make my comment, I can close it out. You can also message them if you wanted to message them. You know, that's a phase two feature, but this is really cool because it's all here, it's all individualized, and I have the records, and they stay in their folder, and they stay in my folder, and I can see them at any point. So that's a really cool feature. And if they had any that were done, I can send it back, you know, saying that, you know, you need to work on this a little bit more before you submit it. You need to work on this, that, or the other. Um, let's see if I have any recent ones. Like here, they can mark their assignment done. Even though this is not like the last one, they can tell me, hey, I'm done with this. And let's see. Even though the quiz is a link, they, they can mark the assignment done on their end. So, can't find anything there, but I just wanted to show you the quick features. That's what I use it for. Um, I really enjoy it because of the fact that I can go to Quizzes. Quizzes is a great site. If I wanted to create a test, the best part is, is you can cherry pick questions people have stayed up and making their um, midnight oil burning on. So here I can search for, I enter the name of the, the quiz and I can put fractions just real quickly, done. And then I can go up here, it's like, okay, let me search for some questions that have already been made on fractions. So I go up here. I can see this question. Oh, wow. Yeah, I like that question. I'm going to add it to my new test. Oh, I love that one. Oh, look at that fantastic one. Let me try another test. Oh, that's a good one. Let me add it to my test. Let me add it to my test. And go to another test. Oh, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Oh, don't like that one. You know what? I'm going to edit this one. You can even do that. So close that out. And here's what their test fraction questions look like. What fractions is red? And then if you wanted to change the answers, right here is where you would do it. So that's quizzes in a nutshell. You know, you can um, save that and finish it and then get a, a link to it. If I were to finish this, uh, usually when you're doing that, you'll have to remember that question number one was the first question that gave you a blank question. So delete that and that's ready to go. You can finish it. They ask you to label it, mathematics. And we'll get it out of here real quick. Thumbs on, tags. Actions. Of course, I would make more effort in doing this than if I wasn't going so quickly. And finish and create. So, oh, they want a grade range. Finish, create. So that's how fast it took me to get all those questions for fractions for an assessment or pre-assessment or a daily check on them. They're all ready to go. And this is what a lot of other sites have. Now, for your group, since you don't, you can play it live if you had a whole set of computers, but this one you can do homework and then you can set it up for how many dates you want.
proceed and then you can go to Google Classroom and share it with my Google Classroom by simply clicking that and then you get the features on how you want to post it. So that's it in a nutshell. I hope it is a helpful start. Let me know if you have any more questions.